Hello again, John Wilde here to give you another look at vintage action figures, and this time we're going to revisit the LJN Wrestling Superstars figures, Series 1 from 1984. The first series of WWF Wrestling Superstars by LJN Toys came out in 1984 and incorporated nine action figures and one ring playset. Each figure came on card. The front of the card was generic. While on the back of the card, a wrestling profile card was there for each individual figure. Also, each figure came with a poster of the purchased figure. Let's get a closer look at one of these carded figures. On the back of the card. Now, let's get a look at each figure individually. Our first figure is Jimmy Snuka. He came back to the WWF in January of 1982. Jimmy Snuka was billed from the Fiji Islands. Jimmy Snuka became famous after his signature move, a splash from the top turnbuckle, was performed from the top of a 15-foot steel cage. Jimmy Snuka also had some pretty great feuds with WWF heels Rowdy Roddy Piper and Don Morocco. Let's get a look at this figure on card and show off the poster he came with. And now a good overall look at the figure. Jimmy Snuka, like all first wave figures, is a relatively easy figure to find. Keep an eye out for paint loss on his hair and the front and backs of his trunks. The posing of the Jimmy Snuka figure is pretty common for first series figures. He's got one arm in an upward flex position and one in a lower flex position. The posing of the Jimmy Snuka figure also gives a little bit of problems with playing with the figure because really all he can do is smash with that elbow. The other arm he could use as a, as for a headlock, but basically those are the only two functions that you can have. But he's in a relatively decent position for him to be able to do his signature splash. Now let's get a look at our next figure. The next wrestler we're going to be looking at is Hillbilly Jim. Hillbilly Jim entered the WWF in late 1984. His storyline begins as he is called Big Jim, a wrestling fan who routinely sat in the front row at taped events. Big Jim then appeared on Rowdy Roddy Piper's show, Piper's Pit, who then offered to train him to become a wrestler. But instead, Big Jim chose Hulk Hogan to train him. Weekly segments tracked Hillbilly Jim's progress in his training. He tag teamed with Hulk Hogan at first and had his first high profile match against Rene Goulet during the War to Settle the Score event on February 18, 1985. Hillbilly Jim injured his leg shortly after this, and additional Hillbilly style wrestlers were added to help push the storylines. He appeared in WWF wrestling matches, regularly with tag teams with his Hillbilly family members, Uncle Elmer, Cousin Luke, and Cousin Junior. During the first wrestling album, Hillbilly Jim produced a song, Don't Go Messing With The Country Boy, and it became his theme song. Let's get a closer look at this figure. Hillbilly Jim did come with one accessory and that's his removable cap. Now let's show off this figure on card and show you a picture of his poster. There's a lot of paint on the Hillbilly Jim figure. As you can see he gets paint wear on his bib overalls, on his beard, and on his toes. He's also often missing his hat. Let's get a look at our next figure. 
And this is our next figure, the Junkyard Dog, hailing from Charlotte, North Carolina. The Junkyard Dog, or JYD, entered the WWF in 1984 and became an instant fan favorite. His original entrance theme was Another One Bites the Dust by Queen, but later in his career, after participating in the first wrestling album, his theme song became Grab Them Cakes. The Junkyard Dog's wrestling accomplishments at the time that these figures were produced is that he won the Wrestling Classic Tournament, the WWF's first pay-per-view event. The Junkyard Dog's signature move was a headbutt performed down on all fours. Let's get a look at this figure on card and show off the poster he came with. And now a closer look at the figure. And now the back of the figure. Here's a good look at the detail on his right leg. And this was mirrored on his left side. Junkyard Dog came with the dog chain and collar. Now there's three different color variations on this chain. There's the red, what you see before you. There was also a black and a gray variation. This chain and collar is often missing from the Junkyard Dog action figure. The Junkyard Dog figure is posed with both of his arms out, one in a fist hand and one in an open hand. The open hand obviously to hold onto the dog chain and the fist hand to be able to actually use the fist. But unfortunately the Junkyard Dog figure because of the detail on both of his legs is a hard figure to find nice and clean with good paint on the legs still. Now let's move on to our next wrestler. Here we have Andre the Giant. Hailing from Grenoble in the French Alps, Andre debuted in the old WWWF in 1973. Andre toted an impressive undefeated streak in the WWF from 1973 to 1987. Andre feuded with most wrestlers in his time, but notably during the production of the toy line, his feud was with Big John Studd. After being attacked by Stud, Andre's hair was cut, which led to the $15,000 Body Slam Challenge storyline, concluding in the first WrestleMania in March 31st of 1985. Now, let's get a look at this figure on card and show off the poster he came with. Let's get a good overall look of the figure. And now the back of the figure. Unfortunately, by the time this figure hit the store shelves, Andre didn't look like this character at all. His hair was cut short. Just one year later, they re-sculpted Andre's head, but he's actually part of the second series of figures, but I just wanted to show off the difference. The first series Andre definitely reflects the 1970s and early 1980s Andre the Giant. The playability of the Andre the Giant figure actually is pretty good. His arms are in a position where he would be able to grab a hold of people and body slam them, and they're also in a position that you can actually flex them out forward or be able to use those fists to kind of get some hits on some guys. Unfortunately, the rest of the sculpt of the figure is just kind of not very good looking. I'm not, Andre wasn't really a well-built guy, but this just kind of looks like, I don't know, somebody's dad at the beach, especially with those small trunks. Well, let's move on to our next figure. Now for a look at our final babyface wrestler, we have the incredible Hulk Hogan from Venice Beach, California. Hulk Hogan re-entered the WWF in late 1983 as the heir apparent to the title then held by Bob Backlund. After Backlund lost the title to the Iron Sheik and was not fit to meet him in a rematch, Hogan was brought out to challenge for the title. And he did win the title on January 23rd of 1984, and Hulkamania was born, a catchphrase described by announcer Gorilla Monsoon. Hulk Hogan was a 1980s icon, and most kids I knew owned this LJN wrestling figure. 
Let's get a look at this figure on card and show off the poster he came with. Now, let's get a good overall look at the figure. And now the back of the figure. Hulk Hogan came with the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship belt. Hulk Hogan, like Andre the Giant, is posed with his arms out in front in, in somewhat of a body slam type of position. This gives you easy access to the arms to be able to use them to hit or to grapple with the other wrestlers. Unfortunately though, he's posed with his knees in a bent position and it causes this figure to actually fall forward. Often you'll find Hulk Hogan figures with uh, wear at the knee pads and at the feet. He also will have paint wear usually on his forehead. Hulk Hogan is probably the most common of these figures to find out in the wild. Due to his popularity at the time, I'd imagine they sold tons of these figures. Well, let's wrap this up. LJN Series 1 Wrestling Superstars figure had the core group of face wrestlers, Hogan, Andre, Snuka, Hillbilly Jim, and the Junkyard Dog. Although not great on articulation, the sculpts are very good and easily recognizable as their characters. The first wave of these figures are the easiest to find on the secondary market, but finding these figures mint is near to impossible if you don't have them on card. For WWF wrestling fans from the 1980s, these toys are cherished reminders of wrestling's glory days. And having them as a collector of 1980s action figures is almost a no-brainer. I would like to thank you for watching my video. Please like, share, and subscribe to catch my latest uploads. And until next time... Oh, oh wait! I forgot all about our bad guys! Tune in next week at this time and we'll review these action figures also.